in this study, I was interested in examining people's enjoyment of ice cream depending on a few different factors. First is the amount of ice cream. What I'd expect is that a higher amount of ice cream or a greater amount of ice cream is going to be related to significantly higher enjoyment of that ice cream. The second thing I examined was perceptions of lack of flavor. What we would expect is that the more people perceive that there's a lack of flavor in their ice cream, the less they're going to enjoy that ice cream, so I'm predicting a negative correlation there. The next thing is the temperature of the ice cream. What I'm expecting is that as the temperature of my ice cream increases, participants are going to perceive that ice cream as less enjoyable. Again, I'm predicting a negative relationship there. So this is Jamovian. What I need to do is I go up to regression correlation matrix. This is going to test the relationships between all of those variables at the same time. So the thing that I'm really interested in is the enjoyment of ice cream. So I like to put that first. That's kind of, you can think of this almost like the outcome variable. That I believe all of these other things are going to contribute to that outcome. So then I'm going to put in the amount of ice cream the lack of flavor of the ice cream, and the temperature of the ice cream. And the way that I clicked all of those at once was I just held down the control button and I clicked. So we can move all of those over to the right side here. Already you can see that the correlations are being presented, but I'm going to go ahead and flag significant correlations there. Now with our correlations, you could, because I came into this expecting that, you know, amount of ice cream is going to be correlated with greater enjoyment, I could make a hypothesis that those two things are correlated positively, in which case I would run a one-tailed test instead of a two-tailed test, but most of the time I see people reporting two-tailed tests, that's what I'm going to suggest to you, unless there is some theoretical rationale and you've pre-registered your study. By the way, keep an eye out. I'm going to make a video very soon on pre-registering studies within psychology. But coming back to this, again, what I'm predicting is that the enjoyment of ice cream is going to be positively related to the amount of ice cream that they're given, is going to be negatively related to the lack of flavor of that ice cream, and is going to be negatively related to the temperature of the ice cream. So over here are the correlations. The first value that it presents each time is the R value. This value can take on any value from negative 1 to positive 1. So the closer to 0 that these numbers get, the weaker the correlation. So the more it indicates that there's nothing going on between those two variables. The closer to 1 in either direction, so the closer to negative 1, the closer to positive 1, the more that this indicates an actual correlation is happening, and it's a stronger correlation. So that R value is telling you the direction and the strength of the correlation. And again, that can be anything between negative 1 and positive 1. Generally, in psychology, we start to get a little bit excited when the correlation goes above about 0 0.20. Um, a pretty moderate to strong correlation is going to be about 0 0.30. And then a pretty darn strong correlation is going to be above 0 0.40. And so what we're seeing here, what's happening is this actually plots the, t the variables on the left side as well as across the top. And so you can see this is enjoyment of ice cream in both of these spots. This is amount of ice cream in both of these spots. This is lack of flavor of the ice cream in both of these spots. And then we've got temperature of ice cream in both of those spots. So the reason that it doesn't give us any numbers on this diagonal is because that's just each variable with itself. So you've got enjoyment of ice cream correlated with enjoyment of ice cream. Nothing to correlate there. The correlation would be exactly 1.00. And so there's no reason to plot that there. Additionally, the reason that it's not giving us anything above the diagonal is because this would just be a mirrored image of what's below the diagonal. So this one right here would be 0.45 because that is the amount of ice cream correlated with the enjoyment of ice cream which would go there. That's the exact same as this. So enjoyment of ice cream with the amount of ice cream and we see that that correlation is 0.45 and we also see that that is significant because that p-value is less than 0.05.
coming down here, and that's consistent with my hypothesis. So the conclusion that I would write here is that greater enjoyment of ice cream was related positively to the amount of ice cream. Or in other words, what I should really say there, because I'm actually predicting that amount of ice cream is going to be my predictor and enjoyment of ice cream is going to be my outcome, I would actually flip those. So what I might say is that consistent with my hypotheses, a greater amount of ice cream is positively related to enjoyment of ice cream. Now also consistent with my hypotheses, what I found is that lack of flavor of the ice cream was negatively correlated with the enjoyment of the ice cream. So the more that that ice cream lacked flavor, the less enjoyable participants perceived that ice cream to be. And then finally, we have the temperature of the ice cream with enjoyment of ice cream. And what we're seeing is that that is a negative relationship such that as temperature of the ice cream increased, participants enjoyed that ice cream significantly less. So that's what I have on running correlations and in Jamovi. If you have any questions or if you'd like to see a video, please let me know what you'd like me to do. And as always, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and be on the lookout for other videos coming out.